Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to our episode number 20, I think it is. It's the next episode in our Rule the Waves 2 collaboration series, uh, where we're playing uh, the Russian Empire with XGRG, myself, Tortuga Power, and Benjamin Magnus in a uh, succession series where each player controls the country for four years and then passes the reins off to the, the next player. Uh, ben Benjamin Magnus, the previous uh, player in the series, uh, left me at war with Germany. In our last episode, we suffered the loss of, I think it was two battle cruisers. We did sink, I think, three, or maybe it was only two enemy battle cruisers that we have sunk so far. But we're at war with Germany. Uh, the war hasn't been going great. Uh, our submarines are doing uh, a good amount of damage to the enemy, but their blockade is likewise hurting the Russian Empire. And that's the situation uh, right now. Now, we're actually about to go into a fleet battle. At least, I think we're about to go into a fleet battle. Somehow, the bulk of my navy has ended up in the North Sea, uh, just to the west of Emden and of Wilhelmshaven, and uh, nearly at the mouth of the Strait of the English Channel. I'm not sure how we ended up over here, considering all our bases are over here to the right. The problem is, with the location that our fleet is going to be fighting in, we don't have access to over 20 of our destroyers, because they're all designed as short-range destroyers. And this is outside of the Baltic Hex, this is in the North Sea Hex, and so short-range destroyers can't make it this far. Somehow our short-range battlecruisers are here, though. As I zoom in here, this is going to be the real challenge of this fight. We have two seaplane tenders, two AVs here in the line of battle. We have three battleships of the Imperator Magnus class. As a reminder, despite the fact that they're labeled as BBs, the Imperator Magnus are really just uh, semi-dreadnoughts. They've got four 13-inch main guns, which is very nice. They've got 16 6-inch secondaries, which are very nice. Uh, I believe they have a, a bulge, and they're, they have good torpedo protection. So they're good ships, but they lack the firepower of an actual dreadnought. And so we have three of these ships that don't have the firepower, but they probably have the staying armored power. We have three ships of the Admiral Tortukov class uh, in, another, in another section of the fleet. These are good ships, but they're slow. They have 10 14-inch guns, uh, good armor, uh, good secondaries, uh, 16 6-inch uh, secondaries, uh, and good displacement, but they're very, very slow. And so if we get into a running uh, gun battle in this, in this uh, upcoming battle, or if we're trying to avoid enemy destroyers, it's going to be very difficult to do so because the enemy fleet is so much uh, faster than ours. Um, let's see, roll core, we'll have AI form, so we're going to have these battleships hopefully just follow the Imperator Magnus class ahead of them. Meanwhile, we have three battle cruisers of the Isterichi Gamer class. Uh, we originally had five of these, but two of these have been sunk. These guys are fast, they can make 27 knots, or in this case 26 for one of the ships. They've got eight 15-inch guns, including five of them uh, with super firing abilities in the rear of the ship, so they can run away fast, and they can also fire a heavy broadside at the enemy. The armor's not as strong, although it's surprisingly not that much weaker than the uh, than the other battleships, but the problem is they really don't do well against torpedoes, as the war to this uh, part has shown. And so we have three battle cruisers of the Istorici Gamer class, we have three battleships of the Admiral Tortukov class, and we have three pre-dreadnought battleships of the Imperator Magnus class. This is going to be a big fight. Nine capital ships all involved. But the thing that makes me very scared is we have one destroyer of the Magnu class over here, one destroyer in the front. So two destroyers are guarding our six battleships, and then we have two more destroyers with our battle cruisers. So a total of four destroyers and two light cruisers uh, to go with our capital ships. This is a ridiculously top-heavy formation, and as a reminder, that's because at the end of the day, uh, we have short-range destroyers that couldn't make it all the way to this uh, engagement. And so that's the situation right now as we're attempting to scout the enemy out. We're also so far removed from our fleet, we don't have any bases anywhere near here. We'd have to sail around Denmark, through the strait, all the way into the, the eastern portion of the Baltic to get out of this fight. So running may not be an option, and the German Navy has something like double our battleships too. So this is gonna this could very well be a annihilation battle with ourselves on the wrong side of the annihilation. We'll set the battleship squadron to 18 knots. The Imperator Magnus class are faster, but the Tortukovs can only make 19, so we don't want to break them down right away. Uh, and that's the situation. So we're going to set the speed to slow. We're probably going to play the battle out in slow, and then we're going to go ahead and run uh, the battle. We're going to go ahead and have our uh, AVs launch float planes to try and detect the enemy. 
And apparently the Isterici has less than 50% fuel remaining at the start of this battle, so we need to be mindful of how long we're running it uh, at maximum fuel because we're way out here. Float planes are launching. Our light cruiser has spotted an unknown ship all the way out here. We're going to have our battle cruisers investigate. We would assume that this is the vanguard of the main enemy fleet, and we'll see how things go. Jack Tank, this is very bad. But I also don't have anywhere to run, so that's the problem, really. All right, so our light cruiser spotted another ship, so we've got two enemy ships here straight ahead of our formation. Our best hope is that we inflict enough damage on the enemy that they decide to run away, and then that we can get away without uh, suffering too many losses. Again, I don't want my battle cruisers to run out there too far ahead on their own as well, just because our battleships are so slow. You can see the float planes are working their way out. They're detecting the enemy formations. Looks like we have a report of a light cruiser. I don't think the Germans actually have any heavy cruisers, so our battle cruiser, the Isterici, named after yours truly, has opened fire on what appears to be an enemy heavy cruiser, but I don't think they actually have any heavy cruisers, so it's either a light cruiser or a battleship. Uh, the German Navy has, I believe, scuttled all their heavy cruisers. And so we're continuing to close the range. I think we'll go ahead and turn off. Look, we've got another formation out here. This is probably their main battle line. Yeah, no place to run, lots of places to ruin. So we're going to turn our battle cruiser a little bit away to try and get the rear guns in action. I mean, if we score a single hit on any of these enemy ships at long range, it could be enough to, to blow one of them up. Especially at the range that we're firing on. These are probably plunging shot distances. Looks like this is the Franlobe. Rebuild from 1918. Can't find info on the ship, though. Okay. Sir, we don't know what it is. All right. The battle cru the second battle cruiser division is going to turn. I should try and keep the engagement at longer range, given that, you know, torpedoes are going to be the death of us if we get in close. So we're going to kind of continue heading off this way. I'm going to slow our battle cruisers down now a little bit. They can run if needed, but there's no reason to have them speeding away at 25 knots when our battle line is only making 18 knots in the in the rear as it comes up. Meanwhile, we do have a handful of light ships that are screening our battle cruisers. The enemy is forming into a line as well. Looks like the enemy battle line is forming up here in a solid line while their light ships uh, kind of fall back a little bit. I'd like to get my battle cru my bat these battle cruisers need to turn. Why are they not turning? Right there, there. All right, so we'll have the Isterici turn a little bit. Their destroyers are forming up in a very nice, smart formation here. We'll have these battleships turn now as well. The Isterici seems to be taking some pretty heavy fire. We did score one hit on one of the lead enemy battleships of the Zachin class. Can we look up info on that? Do we know what this class consists of? So 10, 12 inchers. So these guys are relatively lightly armored from a heavy gun perspective. So 12 inchers versus 15. They've got a little bit better uh, armor than the enemy. Meanwhile, our dreadnoughts are turning. I assume they're in range, but it's kind of hard to tell. Pass through hit on one of our battle cruisers, the Ucherov. Meanwhile, my battleships are turning into action. We're going to increase speed to 19 knots. We're going to have the Isterici turn about face. Meanwhile, the battle cruisers, I think, are dealing with the bulk of the enemy fire at this point. I'm assuming the enemy battle line is actually faster than our own, too. But we've got all six battleships that are kind of in line now. So we are having the Isterici kind of pass to the rear of our main formation now, trying to get it out of the line of the main enemy fire. Meanwhile, our other two battle cruisers of the Isterici class are going to go ahead and turn as well. These battleships are getting a little bit too close, so we're going to peel them away from the enemy a little bit. Keep turning away from the enemy, presenting the other side. Meanwhile, this form, this maneuver is ideally situated to our fleet because... It, holy shit, they're charging right at us. 
because as a reminder, we have five heavy shell uh, guns in the rear of our ships. Meanwhile, the enemy's presenting their stern to us. We've got full broadsides lit up on these enemy ships that are charging straight ahead. I don't want to get too close, though, again, to avoid torpedoes. I'm not charging them. Just for the record, you guys, I'm not charging the enemy formations. They are charging me. I mean, I definitely would take an indecisive battle as well. All right, so we're going to have our lead formation of the Imperator Magnus turn now as well, trying to reverse our course here. If we can isolate any enemy battleships, that would be great. So we've done an about face here. There's two enemy battleships closing in here. Headed the trying to get, I guess, to around to our rear. I don't know if they're peeling off because they're taking more damage than us, or what the deal is. We just got another hit on the Zachen class. I mean, we're already losing the war here, so a victory would be nice. But I also don't want to get my fleet destroyed, obviously. I'd love to take out these two enemy dreadnoughts that have kind of peeled away from their main formation. So I'm going to try and get ahead of them a little bit. We're going to blast our, uh, our ships up here at 25 knots. Let's actually take a look here at the ships. So almost no damage on the Istorichi Gamer class. It has scored one hit with main with its main battery, nothing with its secondary battery. Hasn't even fired any secondary battery guns. Uh, has not taken any damage. Meanwhile, the other battle cruisers here, the Navarin has suffered some flotation and structure damage, four heavy shell hits. It has scored six heavy shell hits and two secondaries. The Ochov has very minor flooding and structure damage. It's taken two hits, scored five. Uh, with its main batteries. So we're trying to focus our fire here on these two enemy battleships, which seem to be a little bit exposed. The problem with this type of a tactic, though, is if we do try and go side to side with the enemy, broadside to broadside, I don't know what my angle has to be to get those rear turrets into action. But it looks like these two ships here in the rear are falling off a little bit, maybe? Maybe I'm just imagining it. S these guys are moving 15 knots, light damage. Both of them claim light damage. Medium damage on the Dresden class, however. Never an X turret hit. Fortunately, there was no explosion there. Didn't say the turret was disabled, though. Let's take a look. Structure damage is increasing. The turret is not disabled, though. We are kind of closing in on these, but there's no enemy destroyers around these ships. The Schleswig Holstein is sailing straight ahead at our ships. What is this madman doing? Continuing to score hits on both the Ellis and Schleswig Holstein. Holstein has heavy damage, light damage on the Ellis class, but it is on fire. Looks like some torpedoes are in the water headed toward the Celestic Holstein. I don't think they hit. But it's dead in the water, so that's a good success so far. The main question is whether the enemy lets us disengage. Our destroyers are closing in on the Celestic Holstein. 
just sailed right by it. Didn't fire anything, as far as I could tell. You know, the Naveen, these two are way too far up on their own, I think. The, this one's not taking too much damage. Oh, shit. But the Navarin is definitely taking a lot of structural damage. So we'll peel them back. Not a ton of flotation damage. Meanwhile, two torpedo spreads, spreads from our two destroyers, one on each side of the enemy battleship. All right, so we hit one, one torpedo into the enemy at least. So if the enemy wants to sail away from us, I would be 100% okay with that at this point. We hit another two more torpedoes into the enemy battleship. It's probably sinking. It's already dead in the water. Meanwhile, we're continuing to fire on the Elisas. I'm largely leaving this enemy battleship to the rear here. I'm assuming it's gone. The enemy may be withdrawing to Emden. But if they do, that's fine, I think, right? I'm just assuming that... Yeah, okay, so the enemy battleship did sink. Our Navarin battlecruisers are, I think, safe. We're spotting some enemy unknown ships. The Elisas is on fire, has suffered medium damage. The Zachis up here, we don't know. Meanwhile, the Isterichi Gamer continues to take shell fire. The Evora Light Cruiser looks like it suffered pretty heavy damage. It's got a little star next to it. Usually that means damage. Meanwhile, my slow battleships. You know, part of the problem is my, my actual ships in the battle line can't pursue. They're too slow. The only ship that can pursue is the Isterichi Gamer or the other battle cruisers but they're too lightly armored to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the main enemy battle fleet. But it does look like they're pulling back to Emden and out of the battle. Mr. Ritchie's superstructure's hit. Dresden's hit. Meanwhile, the rear of the enemy formation is kind of spread out here. I'm going to try and speed up the Imperator Magnus class. I think they can make 21 knots. They'll leave the Tortukov class battleships behind. The Dresden is up to medium damage. It's only making 10 knots. Turn the uh, Isterichi away. Try and get its rear turrets in action. Scoring hit upon hit on the Dresden. I don't know if these are like hits that are actually going to sink it or not. But we are scoring quite a few hits on the enemy. Looks like we're firing on the Elisos as well. I'm not quite sure how our fire is split there. Certainly the Imperator Magnus class is gaining ground, however, on the Dresden. Whoops. What did I do? How is the Isterichi doing damage-wise? She's suffering moderate flotation and structure damage. So I'll probably pull her back. Show our stern, which is where the bulk of our guns are anyway. Meanwhile, the Imperator Magnus class is going to swing around here. The man from Texas, thanks for the follow. All right, so the Isterichi is going to show its stern as it kind of runs. The Dresden is dead in the water. The Elsass is moving slowly. Not dead in the water, but moving slowly. We'll slow down just to try and minimize damage taken. Continue to pound the Dresden. Hopefully some of the handful of destroyers we have can move in and torpedo. It looks like the Magno actually has some torpedoes in the water headed for the Dresden. Dresden turret hit. Flash fire. Ship blows up. Nice. Two enemy battleships down. 
two enemy battleships down. Good. That was a, a tragic day for the Dresden, for the German Navy here. The Germans have lost two of their prized battleships. I'm hoping we can peel north and take out the Alasas. We're kind of between it and its base at Emden. It looks like the rest of the fleet is running for Emden. I haven't really looked at my other battleships to see how they're doing damage-wise. They've scored a single hit. Both of them, a single hit with their guns. Meanwhile, the Potemkin, meanwhile, has suffered... Well, it hasn't suffered that much damage, just for whatever reason it can't keep up speed-wise. Alright, so we're going to have these two battle cruisers move north to chase the Elisas. Or Elsas. It looks like it's dead in the water now. So maybe we can finish off a third enemy battleship. This would be a huge victory if we could take out three enemy battleships without loss. Although, I, I shouldn't get too excited there because we have had a couple of battles already in this war that look like they should be big victories and then they turned out not to be. Or then, you know, we got sunk by an enemy submarine after the battle ended. So this is certainly a good start to the battle. But we'll see how this actually plays out still. I'm just hoping that the loss of two battleships will cause the Germans to run back to their port. A large number of their ships are headed back to port. Elisas is dead in the water. Might have a transport or something else up here. Our destroyer is moving in on the Elisas to launch torpedoes by the looks of it. how many more torpedoes they have, but they're definitely moving in to do it. Imperator Exal Alexander II, meanwhile, very low on ammunition. The enemy battleship's hit by multiple torpedoes. Doesn't look like all the enemy ships here are actually peeling away, though. So two more torpedoes into the enemy ship. That battleship's got to be a goner. Our other, our Imperator Bag Mag Magnus, the rest of our fleet is suffering damage now at this point. So we do need to see if we can disengage somehow. Maybe our best bet is that the enemy will run out of ammo. You can see an enemy Dufflinger class battlecruiser out this way. Oh, is to reach you get away from that. Don't get too close to the enemy there. The enemy battle cruisers are now chasing us. God damn it. We're almost out of ammo, guys. Alright, so the enemy battleship has sunk. There are three battleships down now. The Dirflinger is chasing us, which seems foolish, but I also don't have a lot of ammo left and my ships are kind of battered. I would be 100% okay with this battle just ending. Isterichi, meanwhile, is down to its final 20% of ammo. The Derflinger kind of chased us, but now is peeled off. And hopefully the rest of their fleet heads back to port. There are some other warships here off to the left. And I'm not sure where our AVs went. I think I lost track of them. I think they're out here to the left, to the west. For seaplane tenders. I'm just going to sail north and hope that we get far enough away from the enemy and that they don't chase us for the battle to end. Unknown ships do appear to be screening us. Some signals misunderstood. Might be an enemy battle cruiser chasing us, I'm not sure. Sail away from the enemy. Uh, it's got a, the battle started at 10 a.m. It's now after uh, 6, 6 uh, p.m. So nightfall should be coming soon. We'll move very fast. Again, I'm hoping my AVs have the good sense to sail in the opposite direction. It is nightfall now. I don't know why this ship is sailing east. 
toward Germany. Units are losing contact with the formation. I don't know how long this battle will last. No, okay. Major victory! Yes! Alright, so ships got lost. But here's the end result. We had one battle cruiser with medium damage, two with light damage, two battleships with light damage. Meanwhile, the enemy lost three battleships sunk, five light damage. They also lost one auxiliary sunk. We didn't lose a single ship sunk, and the enemy lost three battleships sunk. Uh, that is a very successful day. We lost three aircraft worth or 300 points worth of aircraft. The enemy lost 500 points worth of aircraft. The enemy had a negative 209,000 score. Oh, man, that's a major victory. Hopefully that uh, that gets our unrest down a little bit. We're at seven, and maybe this will completely turn the war's victory points on its head and get us a major victory against the Germans. That was huge. I did not expect that with no destroyers, basically, in our fleet. That the two or three that we did have did layman's work putting torpedoes into disabled battleships to finish him off. Good job to all of them. Congratulations. Promotions all around. Admiral Nelson would be proud. Russian major victory. Gain two prestige. 13,518 victory points against just 1,500. For the enemy, that gives us a 7,000 victory point advantage. It actually dropped the unrest level from 7 to 6. I don't even know. What do we call that? I don't even know. The miracle in the North Sea. That's your great Jutland turkey shoot. The Baltic? Well, it wasn't in the Baltic, P. Warner. We were fighting in the North, North Atlantic I don't, or North Sea. I don't know why. And somehow we're still blockaded, by the way. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But if we go to the Almanac now with the loss of three battleships, that brings the discrepancy in forces basically to parity. We have eight battleships to their ten. We have three battle cruisers to their two. And so that brings us to very nearly a uh, an equal footing on capital ships. Oh, man. That was, that was exhilarating. What a victory. All right. So we are now winning the war by 7,000 victory points. One would hope we can get a, a successful victory and maybe get some concessions from them so we don't have yet another pointless war against the Germans where we get nothing. But wow, I'm pretty thrilled with that result. Go ahead and save the game. Yeah, I guess we'll move forward one turn and see if we're still blockaded. Widespread demonstrations and serious disturbances are reported in Germany. That's good. Fleet cruising formation. Food is becoming scarce in Germany due to the sinking of merchant ships. So we lost two merchant ships to the enemy submarines for 10 victory points. We sank 32 enemy merchant ships with our 22 subs. We also sank seven with our commerce raiders. A total of 195 victory points versus 10 in commerce warfare. 39 ships lost for him this turn. Trade disruptions from raider and submarine sinkings are causing hardship and food shortages in Germany. And it wants me to fight another battle. Yet another battle. A raid on coastal shipping. I don't understand why I need way more ships than them. We're basically at... Oh, so you're saying there's a blockade modifier. So because we have an easily blockadable coast. Huh. I guess that could make sense. Uh, thanks, Mustache Glasses. I appreciate it. I'm going to decline this battle. Why do I have to fight? I don't want to fight a battle this turn. I know I just gave up like 400 victory points. But I really didn't want to fight another major battle until all of my ships were repaired, which I think they are now. Um... Okay, we're still blockaded. We have a lot of money, though. We have a monthly balance of 6.5 million. 
We're building four heavy cruisers. We're also building several destroyers, all of which will be done in about a year. We've also got more submarines under construction. The enemy has, like, terrible anti-submarine abilities, by the way. Uh, we should probably, given we've got all this extra money, we should definitely go ahead and do some espionage. Maybe we can steal some shit. Although maybe not with the British, because apparently we're almost at war with them. How did the tensions with Britain get so high? Oh, man, that would be disastrous if we went to war with the British. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode of Rule the Waves 2 in our collaboration series with XTRG, Benjamin Magnus, and Tortuga Power. We've won a major victory against the German fleet in the North Sea. The Russian Empire is still uh, blockaded, but the war seems to have turned in our favor. Uh, we will pick things up next time and see how the war continues to unfold as we move toward the first year of the conflict, and hopefully the Russian Empire is ascendant and we see more successes like you saw today. But uh, that is for another time. So until next time, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.